from the Key Radio Studios in Provo, Utah, and broadcasting live throughout Utah County, Sevier County, South Central Utah, Carbon County, and the Uinta Basin. It's your good friends, Mike and Heather, in the morning. Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Hope your day is going well. Uh, They're always, you know. Well, today is the day that the Lord has made, right? So, yes, we are going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it because, again, it it gives us a great opportunity to serve and love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great day. And in the studio, it's going to be an even greater day because ah, Pastor Steve Swinburne is with us today from Price Chapel. Good morning. Good morning. Great to be with you guys. Yeah, yeah. and you're in the studio with us. Yeah, so you traveled good... all the way from Price. Nice drive this morning. It was beautiful out and mm-hmm. had some worship music on and just enjoyed it. Yeah, Hot that's diggity. great. Yeah, and Grant is at the controls, and he's pushing buttons and pushing up and down faders, mm-hmm. and he's smiling so nicely and being pleasant. Yep. <laughs> So I'm, I'm wondering now, you, you said there's some things that you can't buy in price that you needed to come up here to yes. buy. Yes. <clears throat> do, do you mind sharing what something like that might be? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> clothes. Like, I always need to shop for clothes here. My only option really in price is Walmart. Okay. And uh, sometimes I'm just a little snobby for okay. for that. And then, uh, but today I'm on a mission. I need to find a couple kayak paddles and a couple life jackets. Okay. Oh. And those are just hard to find everywhere. So I'm hoping like the sportsman warehouse or played against sports comes through for me. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. It, the thing, you know, when you have that one store in your small community and all of a sudden you look at your neighbor and you're both wearing the same shirt. Like, mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> Exactly. Sale, right? Yeah. Or, How much did you pay for it? <laughs> or if you buy any clothes at Costco, I've uh, into that. Yeah. yeah. My friend Mike and I have been wearing the same polos. You know? <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. It's a uniform. But you it's don't have a, a Costco in price, do you? No, but we'll come to Spanish Fork for it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sometimes okay. you have to travel. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I remember that when we lived in Wyoming, that was fun because we you lived have to in travel s- for everything oh. where we were. Oh, man. Like if you had a, a home improvement project. We mm-hmm. lived in this community. Right now, I think there's 400 people in it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a good day. And and it's so funny because it's like, okay, you have a home improvement project, and all of a sudden you're out of something. You're like, oh, no. And you have to travel almost an hour one way yeah. to go Ooh. and get it and come all the way back. And then yeah. you're like, oh, I forgot this, too. And you had to go, oh, yeah, it was it was a joy. Yeah, you really have to plan ahead mm-hmm. and buy way more of everything that you might even need. Yep. It's, one, one of each. Yep. Yep. And don't yeah. get me started on if you don't have a gallon of milk and you're like, no, how can I eat my Wheaties? It's, yeah, so we get it. We don't have that rough and press. We yeah. at least have a no. Sutherland's and a Walmart and a tractor supply. We just yeah. got a Harbor hey, Freight. Whoa. We're, yeah. we're really getting I up there now. You guys that. are getting so, up there. Yeah. Wow, moving on up. Yeah, that's good. Move that's to good. price. It's way cheaper to buy a house than Provo. Yeah. I, I, well, <laughs> don't I heard tell everybody. I heard they're going up, though. I heard, I heard it's... It, it is it's going a, up, yeah. Yeah. It's and people are actually community. living in price and and working in Utah Valley mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and driving that every day. People drive it. We also have e-fiber uh, internet, so high-speed internet. So if you telecommute, move to Price. Wow. Join Price Chapel. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. So there you have your Community Development Director of Price, Dr. <laughs> Steve Swinburne. <laughs> okay, got to share this. Got to share this. I can't believe I missed this. Like, how could I have missed this? This is news from July. <sighs> You know how like you, well, if you go to a bar or whatever, they have those beer dispensers. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. do, do, do a tap. We've all watched movies. <laughs> okay. You watch yeah. movies. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, Stouffer's, Stouffer's has confirmed that they are working on a machine to dispense cooked macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Mac and cheese on tap. On tap. <laughs> Think about this. This is Brilliant, brilliant. I'm telling you what, they don't have a set date of when they're going to unveil it, but it is a thing. This is a thing. Like, I, I had to look this up because I couldn't believe it. It's just beautiful. It's a tapper for macaroni hot. It has a little internal heater in there, and you just, there's a big macaroni noodle that's the little handle, and you push it, pull it forward, and bloop. <laughs> that's <laughs> the sound it makes. Bloop. <laughs> did, did somebody ask the why question? Oh, I guess the biggest question would have been, why not? Why not? <laughs> why has it taken this long? <laughs> I could totally see that like Maverick. Oh, know? totally. Yeah, right, right. They're saying that they, op- oh, they said, where where should we put it? They were asking people like, where should we put this kind of thing? And they're like, you could be in gas stations like mm-hmm. the Maverick. Uh, weddings. Can you imagine the uh, weddings, mm-hmm. burger joints, people's homes? You could get your very own. I don't know. The, the, there used to be phone booths on every street corner. I think a little booth and and then one of the mac and cheese. <laughs> there you taps go. Right there. This is 
this just is, on every street corner, let's get mac and here. cheese. <laughs> let's, let's pull it back together. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, we are talking about Grace today. This sounds like Grace. Oh, yeah. man, this sounds... No. I mean, if you're going to have something squirt through a tap, it should be like <laughs> meat and potatoes or something. <laughs> well, now you're getting disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> mashed potatoes oh, on mashed tap. Mashed potatoes on tap. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that great. That just makes sense. It, it seems does. easier to dispense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the best part is Velveeta's Twitter account retweeted this announcement and added a one word commentary respect. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Brilliant, right? This is a life changer. But when you're going for the high end macaroni and cheese, mm. you mm. want that crust. That's the best part of it. And, where it's just and a not Velveeta, cooked. probably. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys are just being a little snobby here. I think this is fabulous. I think this is this is like the best thing since deep fried Twinkies. <laughs> I think this is terrific. Which anyway. can be squeezed through a tap as well. Yeah. And you, and you couple this, like, you remember, like, they had this vending machine where you could, you know, put in your money and out pops a, a pizza, an already cooked pizza. Now you've got a Mac, and, Mac on tap. I think this is... Oh, my life. It's so mm. beautiful. It's a good time to be alive. Good morning, Mom. <laughs> good morning, Mike Meisenberg. Oh, wonderful. Good morning. Thanks for listening. We'll, we'll talk about something important now, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to work, Mike. Oh, man. Talking about flying sola. Okay. What does that mean? Well, solo. We're talking about the five solas of the Reformation and why they are so important today. It's the fundamentals of Christianity. Okay. And so just as a little quick recap, these five statements are, we are justified by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, according to scripture alone, for God's glory alone. Now, as we said yesterday, it's not like Martin Luther and Ulrich Zwingli and all those guys got together and said, let's put, you know what? It'd be really cool to have a sermon with five points <laughs> and we'll call them the five souls. It didn't work that way. But over time, as people were studying uh, the Reformation and everything that was going on and, and the things that people were concerned about, they're like, you know what? There were just really five basic things here that were at the heart of of the Reformation, where and there were the five solas, and so like over time they developed. So um, don't get excited if you don't see anything like that in any of the writings of, you know, Martin Luther or, or whomever. Uh, but Steve, Steve, you're you're mm-hmm. a church history buff too, aren't you? Yeah, uh, yeah I love church history. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, why so. am I talking? Yeah. So it's actually. <laughs> yeah, Heather. Why are you talking? You know, you see all these five. In... <laughs> That's not what I meant. Yes, it is. <laughs> You see all five in, in Reformation uh, writings and themes and Martin Luther's preaching, but yeah, he never put all five together and said these are the five solas. In fact, that didn't happen until 1965, as so I was doing a little more research. Ah. There's a guy named Johann Baptist Metz, who's a German theologian, and he wrote a book uh, called The Church and the World and had the five souls. And, and the interesting part of this is he was a Catholic priest and theologian, and he... Uh, put this yeah. in his book. So uh, kind of interesting, but you, you see it, you know, throughout uh, Reformed and, and Lutheran theology, you know, early on these, these kind of themes. It's mm-hmm. quite a catchy name he has. Are you going to have any more kids? You, you got some... Johan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're done with kids. Three's, <laughs> three's good. We multiplied. <laughs> and, and so you say, unless God has another plan, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, why, if, if that's the case, if this really wasn't developed until you said the 60s, mm-hmm. why... Is this such an important thing? Mm-hmm. Why place such importance on the five solas? Mm-hmm. I mean, we see it on T-shirts now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think so often we create man-made religions that are based upon rules and things we come up with. And so it, it's really easy for the human brain actually to understand like lists and rules. And so just give me a list of things that I got to do these five things and I get to heaven and I'm good. And uh, the, these five souls remind us that that getting to heaven relationship with God is not about us checking off a list. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus, about what he's done for us, wants to do in us, not just like us checking off this checklist and then we're, we're good to go. Mm-hmm. And so I think this is so helpful for us to, to be able to focus on these things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good to organize things and, and come up with some bullet points. So too, mm-hmm. that helps. It helps in sermons. Yeah. It helps in, uh, you know, accomplishing tasks mm-hmm. in life. Um, here we get five points. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bing. 
Yeah. I, yeah, every pastor knows that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought if a pastor starts a message like, I got five points today, you're like, oh, no. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be a, yeah. long, a long one because, <laughs> Late lunch. you know, yeah. the, the question every sermon uh, brings to mind is, when is lunch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the lunchtime in, in the five solas here. Oh, that's great. But it does get confusing. Like, if you, as with like a sermon and your five bullet points, it's really important that we understand that there's like a context to all of this as well. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we were discussing yesterday regarding just as a recap for um, scripture alone, because it's not saying that, okay, we just have scripture to learn from and everything, there's no truth anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So it was about, listen, according to scripture alone, how, how are you saved? It's, you will learn how to be saved through scripture alone. Now there will be other people who will speak truth into things and they will give you background information about maybe traditions of uh, how it was to live during the Roman empire and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, uh, it goes back down to scripture. Yeah, that's so important because what had happened in church history is tradition had become um, ahead of scripture. So it wasn't, well, what does the scripture say? It's, well, what does the tradition say? Or in the Catholic church, what does the Pope say? And whatever the Pope say is, says is then gospel. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's important to put scripture first and then realize there are other things that inform how we interpret that scripture and how we in- interpret truth. Um, one of those uh, kind of frameworks that's been helpful for me is called the Wesleyan Quadrilateral. <laughs> okay, that's John, a mouthful. <laughs> John Wesley uh, came up with this, who's a, kind of the forefather of holiness movement, Wesleyan movement, Methodism. And um, and so when they were looking at, well, okay, what's truth? How do we figure out, you know, what God's saying? Um, scripture is always number one. So sacred scripture is above all else. But then they had three things kind of underneath that, that would inform it. The, the second was reason. Okay, so how do we take scripture and then use reason to apply it? And then experience, how does this scripture play out in the experience of our lives? And then tradition, they said, you know, the truth is we can't really interpret scripture apart from our tradition. So if you're from a Reformed tradition and you come to the scriptures, you're going to interpret it, you're going to read it within your tradition. If you're a Pentecostal, you're going to see it in your Pentecostal eyes. And it takes a lot of, for us to get kind of back from our tradition mm-hmm. and see it with fresh eyes or see it through... Uh, you know, the eyes of, okay, how does someone in China or, or a Christian in, in Brazil see this scripture and not just through my American eyes, through my tradition? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is this is tremendous. Um, so one question that I would have then, too, is why is scripture, why does that trump everything mm-hmm. else? Why, why would we say scripture is above uh, what a pope says or what a mm-hmm. church leader says? Why would we say that scripture is above our, even our traditions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, will you as Christians believe that Scripture is inspired by God, that it's authoritative, that it's authority for our lives? And so it's what um, we're going we're gonna to go back to and we're going to find as kind of the bedrock of, of our faith. And it's God's revelation to us of who he is and, and his work in human history um, throughout multiple continents, multiple generations, um, you know, different ethnicities and people groups. And so uh, to, to me, that's like, okay, we, we got to go back to the scripture. We, we need an authority. And we live in a, a day where we can't agree on what facts are. We can't agree on what truth is. We can't agree on any authority. In fact, we have rebellion against authority. And so, uh, but I think there's a yearning to, to have some sort of grounding. Like we need, we need somewhere we can go and be like, this is what truth is. Mm-hmm. And so there's some scriptures that point to that, you know, Second uh, Timothy 3.16, all scriptures God breathe, mm-hmm. useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness so the person of God can be thoroughly equipped for, for every good work. Um, so scripture is uh, what we look to, and it, it just brings life. Like if I read the Bible every day, and if I don't read it, if I don't get in it that day, like I'm missing something. There's something just in it that the Holy Spirit brings to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's funny that you mentioned that too, because just yesterday I was reading this article about how now even two plus two could equal five. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we need to ground ourselves. I mean, that, and, and it's a big deal. It's a big debate. People are all on, on it. And it's like, really, really? No, you're just, this is, you're messing with me. You're messing with me. Okay. Uh, my bank says no. Yeah. <laughs> I tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> So, yes. Um, so this is good. And so the, and and friend, as we're talking about these things, you know, when we're talking about grace alone today. We're going to be talking about grace alone. Uh, this that's the reason why we started off with Sola Scriptura. OK, because everything that we're getting is from the word of God. Don't believe us. Go back to the God's word, the Bible. OK, and, and check this out for yourself as we're even 
commenting today and, and having this discussion, there is going to be Bible verses that come up. Write them down. Check them out. Look at the context. That's on you, okay? All of us. All of us are supposed to go back and check it out for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, so exciting times this really is, and this is going to be a great conversation because today, I hope I'm saying this right, it's sola gratia. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're being kind. <laughs> he is always being kind. <laughs> You're so nice. It's okay. Um, but what does that mean? It's by grace alone. Okay, and you're like, oh, you guys talk about grace all the time. And that's okay. That's good. Uh, Because here's the deal. We are sinners and we know it. we've talked about it all the time. And you're probably getting angry about us too, saying you guys, you always say how horrible we are. Well, we are horrible people. That's the reason why we need Jesus. Um, But but Jesus, what he has done for us, that's not a get out of jail free card. Okay, it's not like saying, hey, you know what? If you believe in Jesus, you have fire insurance. Isn't that exciting? And it's certainly not. Certainly not permission to live in sin, to have a sinful lifestyle. Grace does not allow us that. Grace is a gift, and it's precious, and it's true, and it's beautiful. And so for that reason, we should not be trampling on grace. But I'm getting ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's first go and ask the question, what is grace? Why is this so very important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think yesterday of like a metaphor that we could understand right now for grace. So let me let me just put it like this. So um, imagine um, I got coronavirus, I got COVID-19, and uh, it came down quite bad, but uh, I hadn't been wearing a mask, I hadn't been social distancing, I kind of thought, you know, this, this is ridiculous. You and were if licking I get it, doorknobs, I'll be fine. yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going and, yeah, licking doorknobs and, <laughs> and finding sick people and hugging them. And, and so I got coronavirus, got really sick, ended up in, in the ER for three weeks, and uh, I recovered. The doctors helped me out, and I get out, and I I owe a hundred thousand dollars to the hospital, mm-hmm. and I have no way to pay this. Mu- I don't know. I have a hundred thousand dollars. In fact, I didn't even have health insurance, and so I am in trouble. I have this huge debt, and Governor Herbert hears about me, and Governor Herbert asks uh, about my situation, finds out I did not listen to him or wear a mask. I didn't listen to him in social distance. In fact, um, I, I made fun of him on social media, and uh, he says, you know what? That's okay. I'm gonna pay Steve's hospital bill. I'm gonna pay that hundred thousand. That's okay that he's disobeyed me. That's okay that he didn't listen. I'm just gonna show him grace, and and that's grace is what God's done for us. We've rebelled against Him. We've we've gone against everything He wanted us to do, but He still says, "Hey, I I'm gonna pay it all. I'm gonna give you something we call unmerited favor, something no, no, that's he's, undeserved." He's, he's paying with. With his money. Yeah, personal not, money is not, not your tax money, money. Mike. <laughs> this is Governor Herbert. Good, good point, Mike. I think he's fairly wealthy. I don't know. But let's just say he could do it. I, if John Huntsman would have won governor, I'm sure he could have done it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So unmerited favor is what mm-hmm. you're saying. So we didn't earn anything. Yeah. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. It's nothing that we can do because we don't have the ability to give ourselves grace. We don't have the ability. And this is so true in our lives. Like, so often we beat ourselves up because, and and we condemn ourselves, and we're we can't give ourselves grace, and we don't think others will give us grace. So often we we hide, and we go into to patterns of, of of hiding and shame and and sin because we're afraid if someone else knew who I truly was, they won't be able to extend me grace. They won't be able to love me. Mm-hmm. And the idea with grace is that God knows exactly who we are. He knows everything we've done, and He still loves us. He still extends His His grace to us despite everything we've done. I love what you just said there because many times when we're talking about grace, we omit the word love, Mm -hmm. but that's really the motivation for God's grace, is it not? Yeah, it is. He just wants to love us and uh, and that's what what grace is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's neat too because when you're looking Mm -hmm. at who God is, God is the father, right? And Mm -hmm. fathers love their children. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you're not looking at a God here. Maybe we're worried about God's character Mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, but he's just waiting for me to make a big mistake so he can squash Mm -hmm. me. Well, then you don't understand Mm -hmm. who your God is. Mm -hmm. God is, he's a loving father and he loves you. Now, the mistakes, I won't even say, I think the open rebellion that we willingly do that's not good. And he's not mm-hmm. saying, oh, that's okay, little one. We would just overlook that. Mm-hmm. There, No, because this, this is where I think all of our illustrations from the world fall short. Because it's like, you know, the governor says, ah, yeah, I, I, I got it covered. Uh, but in, in God's economy, somebody, it, he's still a very just God. Mm-hmm. And so somebody has to pay mm-hmm. for that. 
And in our situation, that rebellion, that open rebellion against God, that's called sin. And the Bible is very, very clear. The wages of sin, what we earn because we have been in complete rebellion mm -hmm. against the Almighty God, that's death. So explain to us what that's all about. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that payment? What did God do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so you're, you're exactly right. Um, we have all sinned, and Romans 3.23 says we've all sinned. We've That means we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark of perfection. And what we often try to do is be like, well, I'm a good person, and to measure our goodness, we just compare ourselves to someone right. else. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're like, well, I'm better than Grant. Um, or I'm better than Mike, but Heather's better than me. And, you know, we, we just do all this comparing, right? He doesn't know and, me very uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it's God, hypothetical. God's yeah. <laughs> saying to us in the scripture is, is no, you know, I'm not comparing you to each other. I'm comparing you to me. Like, be holy as I am holy. And none of us can live up to that. None of us are perfect. Jesus, when he's on earth, he lived a sinless life. He, he set an example of what it could truly look like to be truly human in God's image. And um, and so all of us have fallen short of that and messed that up. And and Jesus, when he died on the cross for us, he took upon the weight of of that debt. So my hospital illustration, he took upon that hundred thousand dollar debt, uh, but greater uh, the debt of all our our sin, and and took that upon himself and paid for it through his death and his resurrection. So that if we would put our faith in him and we'd receive him, we could receive that forgiveness. And then because of, of what he's done for us, we can then be reconciled to the Father. We can be reconciled to each other. We can be rec reconciled to all of God's creation um, because of what Jesus has done in paying that debt. So um, when we talk about you know being justified, uh, this, is, this is this legal term connected to grace where Jesus has justified us. He's, he's made us uh, just or whole or righteous in, in God's image. So when God looks at us, he's not seen all of our sin, baggage, and, and everything else, but he's seen what his son has done on our behalf. Mm. So Christ's righteousness, not our own, because yep. we don't have it. Yeah. We always think we have some, mm -hmm. but we don't. It, yeah. it's, it has to be Jesus's. Wow. Okay, so here's the thing. How do I receive God's grace? Let's mm -hmm. let's go there next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a sinner, and you, you realize you're a sinner, and we're all in the same boat, friend. So don't don't think that I'm just saying that you're a sinner, okay? We all are. If you're a human being and you're breathing, you're a sinner, okay? Uh, that's We're just born into it. So I want God's grace. How do I go about getting mm. that? Yeah. That, that's always the big weird question. I think it's a trick question too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a principle we see throughout the scripture that God um, exalts the humble and he humbles those who exalt themselves. And, and so really what we often do is, as human beings is we try to exalt ourselves. We build ourselves up. And, and God eventually humble us and cause us to realize, like, I can't do this on my own. Mm -hmm. So if we come to God in humility, first of all, and just say, God, I am messed up. I can't do this on my own. I need your grace in my life. I need your forgiveness. I need your love. I want it. Um, and, and then, you know, we can pray prayers that are the beginning of the conversations we need to have with God that are, are, are prayers that say, God, Jesus, would you forgive me of my sins? I acknowledge that you're Lord, um, that you've done something spectacular for me, and I want to live my life for you. And, and so that's part of the conversation. But really, God's just looking for us to cry out to him mm -hmm. and, and say, you know what? I'm humbling myself before you. I'm broken before you. I can't do this on my own. Mm. I can't do this on my own. Are you feeling that today? Maybe you're saying that to yourself. You're looking around you and you're realizing that every time I even try to fix something, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're like, and all of us are like, or maybe you're the person who's like, wait a minute. What you're saying is I'm a wretched human being. I'm <laughs> sorry. Do you see all the good things that I do? I am on, I'm the chair committee in my community. I do all of these wonderful things. I go to church all the time. I am always so faithful with tithing. I do this. And every time you hear yourself say that, you've got an eye problem, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, do you, do you hear that you're actually putting yourself above the Lord? Mm -hmm. That that's idolatry, <laughs> okay, um, and and that's kind of God is going to humble those who exalt yeah. themselves, uh, friend. Don't let that what God does be something that's going to crash you down hard. He's calling you right now. Humble yourself before God. Humble yourself and recognize that you don't have any righteousness. Those things that you're doing that those are great. Um, they're not going to get you to heaven. They're not putting you in a right standing with God. 
God has done the work. And by your stiff arming the Lord, that's a complete insult to him. And not only that, it is treasonous, too, because what you're Mm -hmm. saying is um, the king isn't the king. I've got this. And you're trying to usurp his throne. That is that is a tremendous, tremendous sin. So, friend, today, just humble yourself before the Lord. Realize, recognize that even the stuff that you do that's good, that really comes from God, too. Mm -hmm. There is no none righteous. There's none righteous, no, not one. And that's repeated throughout the Old Testament as well as the New. That means you, my friend, and I, my friend, we are not righteous. We gain our righteousness through Christ and Christ alone. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And I hope that today you can just sit down with the Lord and cry out and say, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, I do need your forgiveness. Lord, help me. And there is no, I love how you just said, begin the conversation Mm -hmm. because this isn't about, okay, here's that list again. Oh, there's, (laughs) oh, there's that sinner's prayer right in the Bible. There isn't one. Okay. (laughs) right. Just start talking to the Lord. And then my friend, if you've done that today, we need to hear from you because we would love to help you take the next steps. Maybe get a Bible in your hand, maybe help uh, connect you to a local church, people who are going to be able to do this thing called discipling, showing you the way, loving you, helping you. And, and, and helping you draw closer to the Lord. Um, we do this as a community, and that's where the local church comes in. Um, wow, okay. Um, I, I have so many other questions, but I think maybe let's take a big bur- breath, uh, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. Mike, it looks like you... Yes, I have a trivia question ready, Heather. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have from a the, trivia. Yeah, yeah. From the Complete Book of Bible Trivia from Five. J. Stephen Lang. J. Stephen Lang. <laughs> We're in a category of death in massive doses. Oh. <laughs> yes, death this doesn't sound in pleasant. massive doses. The Old Testament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What nation saw 185,000 of its soldiers slaughtered by an angel of the Lord? Ooh. Mm-hmm. That is death by massive doses. Okay. If you know the answer, then you need to let us know. You can give us a text 855 539 4583. That's 855 Key Glue. You can also comment on the comment section on Facebook Live. Just check out Key Radio and Facebook. You'll find us. It's easy. You are listening to Mike and Heather in the morning on Key Radio with Pastor Stephen Swinburne from Price Chapel. Key Radio Life Unlocked, Truth Unleashed. We're so glad you're with us today. We're having a conversation about grace from the five solas. Oh, uh, sola. No, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've been wanting to do you, that. You know what? Long. Here's a question for you, though. If it didn't get gathered up until the 60s, 60s why did they do what use the Latin? <laughs> <laughs> because you just sound like you're a really respected theologian when you speak in Latin. Ooh, okay, yeah. everybody together now. Sola gracia. <laughs> well, I just sound silly. <laughs> and Heather's question from yesterday is Roman numerals. Are they Greek <laughs> or Latin? <laughs> uh, I think they're Latin. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, stop picking on me. <laughs> I think it's a good question. All right, okay. back to genocide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Something lighter. Yeah, okay, so the question, the question under, what was the category? Death in massive doses. <laughs> so uncomfortable with this. Okay, in the Bible, Old Testament, the question is. What nation saw 185,000 of its soldiers slaughtered by an angel of the Lord? We're going to Second Kings for this. Can I get? Can we guess? Yes. Okay, Grant, you first. What, do you have a guess for this? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he doesn't listen You're to out. class. Okay, I'm going with, I think, Samaria. I think, or no, Assyria. Oh, I get those two mixed I up. I don't have No, it. Samaria is the city. Syria. Assyria. Syria? Assyria. 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 Would probably be. Well, come on, yeah. pick something and go with it, okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go with Sennacherib is the guy who was the leader, so it would have to be Assyria. Ding, ding, ding. Ah! Oh, yes. very good. Okay, yep. Okay. woo, and that came from... And so what did she win? She wins nothing. <laughs> nothing. I get nothing. And, and you get to like it. <laughs> you get nothing. Mike to has like to do it. the dishes tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guess what well, we're eating off of, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Paper plates. Paper plates. Somebody has to cook Fine before giant. we do dishes. Oh, <laughs> that's what I cooked yesterday. Oh, I don't. That's the hard thing about being an adult. You're always worried about what you're going to cook next. It's like it never ends, but that's okay. All right, let's go back to sola gratia, which means by grace alone. Sola meaning alone, and gratia meaning grace. So I'm not sure I like what you do with that word. What is it wrong? Is it gratia? I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, you're, you're it's the fine. doctor. It's fine. You're the doctor. What is it? You're good. I didn't study Latin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stella Grace. Okay. Mike Meisenberg, do you have any ideas? Let us know. Well, how? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So why did, here's the question that I, I want to know. Why did the church prior to the Reformation deem grace as a dangerous concept? <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah. this sounds really good. Why would we ever deviate from this whole grace alone thing? Because you control people by fear. Uh. <laughs> so if you're a church, you want to make taking money, you want to control people, you're going to control them by fear. Control, you can't really control people by grace. It just doesn't work. <laughs> okay. And if we, and again, this isn't being unfair. This is documented history where um, just a lot of corruption was going on in the church and the people were being oppressed and the church would say, listen, we want money for this. How are they going to get the money? Well, um, tithing wasn't going to cut it. So we needed something else. And that's where they started in with things like paying money to get out of a thing called purgatory, which doesn't exist, or paying money for indulgences, meaning that, hey, are you going to sin or have you sinned? Well, now you need to pay money for that. That's so opposite of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's it's funny because if you go to Europe, one of the things you like to do if you go to Europe is visit all these really old 600-year-old, 700-year-old cathedrals that are just beautiful, amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but how were they? A lot of them funded. They were funded by selling indulgences, which was basically your your get out of hell free cards, or get out of a certain sin free card, or pay for your relative who's already died, and there you know you, you pay a little bit of money, you can get them uh, on into heaven. So um, th that was the abuse. Martin Luther in, in the Reformation a little bit five hundred years ago was pretty upset about that, um, as he should have been, and said, hey. This isn't about money. This isn't about uh, the church controlling things. Like, if if a church tells you they're the one that controls salvation, they're mm. wrong, and you're going to the wrong kind of church because God is the one who controls salvation. He's the only judge. Your church is not the judge of salvation. Mm. So a church has not died for you. A church <laughs> has not paid the penalty for yes. your sin. But I, I don't want to give churches a bad rap. So why? I mean, it says mm -hmm. also that that Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. So and he's the head of the church. So yeah. what is the what is the point of church? Let's just go mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Well, the church is the body of Christ. Jesus, uh, the scriptures use this metaphor that the church is the body uh, or the family of God is another metaphor used. So um, if you want to be in God's family, his family is the church, it's his people. And and to be part of family means that it's messy, but it's a place of belonging. And we have so much yearning for belonging. Where do you truly belong? Where do you truly feel accepted? Mm -hmm. And we should feel that in the church with the people of God that we feel belonging there. We feel accepted there because we're in God's uh, family. We've been welcomed into that. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, our church is perfect. Nope. No, so no Christ churches. Chapel isn't perfect. Is no, that what you're we saying? are imperfect because there's people there, and anywhere there's uh, people, there'll be uh, imperfection, and there'll be conflict. And mm -hmm. so um, as Christians, we have to figure out, okay, we got to deal with conflict. We can't just run away from conflict. And so uh, when Martin Luther nails his 95 theses uh, to the door of, of, of a church, as, as the story goes, he starts this big conflict, and mm -hmm. it, gets, it gets really ugly. And I think at times Martin Luther wish the conflict was in. In fact, there's one quote I wanted to share from him. Um, he wrote this in the commentary on the epistle to the Galatians. He said, if the Pope would concede that God alone, by his grace through Christ, justifies sinners, we would carry him in our arms. We would kiss his feet. <laughs> so even Luther had this yearning, like, if the Pope would just repent and say, yes, God justifies by grace alone through Christ alone. We'll, we'll, we'll come back into the, like, we're okay. We can, we can make this work. We can resolve this, but uh, Pope didn't And we also have to remember, too, that when he did that, putting those 95 basic complaints, right, mm -hmm. uh, when, he, when he nailed that to the door of the church, that wasn't his, like, big announcement. That's something that they did. They would have discussion. That was his way of, of inviting dialogue to discuss yeah. the things that he had concerns mm -hmm. about, those 95 things. So in our context, when we see something like that, we're like, rebellion, this is, <laughs> this is, this is great. And, and it's not, that was their way of basically inviting discussion into the marketplace of ideas. And let's, let's talk about mm -hmm. these, right? It's a nonviolent protest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Opening things up to, no, to really understand. <laughs> right. But when we hear, oh, hammer and nails, oh, he's going to get them. No, that wasn't, that wasn't the way. It wasn't his intention. So, um, but boy, when, when you, when you have men who love the Lord, who love his word, and they see that there is injustice, 
and misinterpretations or just downright lies and deception, um, there needs to be someone. Those men are going to come forward. They are going to say, "Uh, uh, uh, here's what the Bible says. And we are blessed for men like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean those men are perfect either. OK, so we still the only one who's perfect is God himself. <laughs> so um, and that's the reason why it's so good uh, to have. Um, scripture, I, I guess going back. So we talked about how it was dangerous back then. The why? I mean, we look at religious systems all over mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. and there's a lot of hostility toward the concept of grace. Even today, is it because of the same thing? Um, is it man's pride? I, I think a lot of it goes back to the same thing of trying to control people and controlling them through fear and man-made religion. Mm-hmm. And um, grace kind of goes against that. Grace is saying God's going to forgive you. And often man-made religion says, no, no, this institution is going to tell you whether you're forgiven or not based upon um, what you've done or not done. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, As we look at the word grace, mm-hmm. yeah. and you know, we, we use it a lot yes. in the, the side of the cross, mm-hmm. the side of the resurrection. Uh, but... Mm-hmm. It goes back to the Old Testament. It mm-hmm. goes back. God's grace was from day one mm-hmm. shown. Uh, can, can we talk about that a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you see God's grace uh, throughout the, the Old Testament scriptures. I mean, to start with Adam and Eve, they rebel against God. And what does God do? Well, he, he they don't get to stay in the garden anymore, but he shows them grace. He allows them to continue and continue to have a relationship with him. Um, we see f- stories from Noah to Abraham um, on throughout the scriptures of David, you know, God's grace to David. Uh, doesn't mean there wasn't punishment for his sin. doesn't mean there wasn't some judgment, but still grace to him. God still uh, maintained this relationship with David, even in the midst of David's awful sin and rebellion against God. So, yeah, we, we see that that posture of God. And one of the interesting things, um, as I was studying grace a little bit, is that the, so the word that we interpret grace in our English Bibles is a Greek word. Um, which would spell like C H A I R S, mm-hmm. and Jesus actually never used that word in any of the the gospels in his teaching. He never used that. Um, so some people could say, "Well, is this just Paul's invention? Is this just uh, other places?" Uh, but Paul and John and and Luke and and others in the scriptures uh, develop this idea of grace. But we see it in Jesus' teachings and we see it in his parables. So. Uh, a great example would be the parable uh, of the lost son is a story of grace that Jesus gives. So this is what God's like. Uh, you know, there's a son that rebels against his father. He goes and does awful things. He w- basically, you know, wishes his father wasn't around anymore. And then he ruins his life so bad that he comes back to the house and he hopes to just be a servant or be a slave. But his father is there welcoming, accepting him, welcoming him back in. So Jesus tells parables and, and stories and, and and shows this grace, even though he never like used that word specifically as recorded in the scripture. Um, we see that. Uh, this theme of grace throughout the Old Testament, we see it throughout uh, Jesus' life and ministry. Mm-hmm. I think it's even a loving gesture on the Lord, like going back to the garden and Adam and Eve had sinned, after, I mean, open rebellion to the Lord, mm-hmm. right? And they were the ones, if anybody on the planet, they were the ones who had probably the coolest relationship with God. So it just tells you a little bit about human heart, right? But um, God, you know, they, they, they hid themselves. They put leaves on themselves. And God, he, even though he's like, this is not the way to do it. And I think he kindly covered them with animal skin mm-hmm. because he's like, okay, <laughs> um, you know, and I think that was a loving thing that he did. And and I know some people think, I'm grateful oh. for it still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I just, we have to get over the thought that, you know, God is, is mean. Now, does there need to be judgment against sin? Absolutely, because God is a just God. I hope so. There's a lot of things in this world that need to be set right, aren't there? A lot of brokenness that needs to be set right, a lot of evil that needs to be taken care of. Amen. Amen. Okay, but when we talk about grace, too, I like, Mike, how we started that, talking about um, grace in the Old Testament. And then we said right from the beginning, right from the beginning, starting in, in, uh, boy, chapter 3 of of Genesis. But now, after the cross, do we still experience God's grace? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Maybe we should look at some scriptures on grace, because uh, I don't think we've hit too many scriptures okay. on yet. And I saw you had a tab on your uh, computer there with some scriptures up earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll just mention one to get us started. It's Galatians 2.21. And uh, remember, Galatians written by Paul. Paul was, he had a religious resume that was very long. So he could say, hey, I've done, I could do this all myself. I could, I did all the works right. You know, I got, uh, you know, I got these recommends from people. I've done everything right. And then he meets Jesus and realizes, no, <laughs> all that was garbage. And in Galatians 2.21, he says, 
I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So, so literally says, if, if I could attain grace through obeying the law, well, then Christ died for nothing. They, they, there wouldn't be any point. The reason he died was because grace could not be attained through the law. Mm. So uh, that's one I, I just love on uh uh, on grace. I think Ephesians 2, 8, 9, you got there. Why don't you read that, Heather? That's a good one. Yeah, for one. by grace you have been saved through faith, and mm-hmm. this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, the gift of God. I love that. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. a result of works so that no one may boast. Amen. Yeah. A gift. A gift. Gift. And not a result of works. So if you're boasting in what you've done, that doesn't, mm-hmm. no, it's a gift. And and I love that some some translations, just because we even get this confused, that whole word gift, say free gift, mm-hmm. free gift, just in case you didn't get it. You didn't earn it. <laughs> right. OK. It's like it's it's beyond like if you even think of the metaphor of of people getting married and then so you're like, oh, I was invited. They're getting married. I'm going to give them a gift. Well, still, they're getting married. And so that's kind mm-hmm. of tradition. But this is like, no, you're just you were just a slob and, yeah. and God gives you this. Yeah. You know, you didn't deserve it. You didn't do anything. Um, I, I love that. And so to let no one may boast. The only person you can boast in is, is Jesus mm-hmm. himself. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Oh, give, give us some more here. Oh, I love um, Ephesians 1 verse 7. Yes. It says, in him, so that's in Christ, we have redemption. So we've been redeemed through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he's lavished on us. And I just love that one. It's like, he's rich in grace. He's got plenty of it. We live in a world where... Um, like our economic model often is one of fear and scarcity. So if we give too much here, or we, we spend too much here, you know, we're going to run out. Or if we give these people money that don't have money, then, well, there's not going to be enough for all of us. So we live in a world of scarcity. And God's world is a world of generosity, trust, and abundance. He says, I lav- I got, I'm rich in grace and I can lavish it. Uh, on all of you, which I, I love that. I love that the one. word yeah. lavish. Yeah. Lavish is a good word. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just I just love this. And James 4, 6 also, it just says mm-hmm. he gives, but he gives more grace. Mm-hmm. So like there's that lavish, lavishness again. Yeah. Um, I, Romans is also very strong in it. When we talk about Romans 11, um, but if it is by grace, then it is no longer on the basis of works, okay? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. So there you go with that free gift concept again. Mm-hmm. So this is God just giving this to us, mm-hmm. giving us. And what is he giving us again? Well, first off, he's giving us justification so that mm-hmm. we can be in right standing with him. So we don't have to worry about the condemnation and the punishment and the judgment and the wrath of God because we are putting our faith and trust in what Jesus has done. Mm-hmm. Jesus has done that. He's taken on all of that. And so what we do we do is we just trust in what Jesus mm-hmm. has done, um, but that's it. That's not a work. That's mm-hmm. just trusting. Yeah. Uh, let's let's go there, because there is a connection then between grace and faith. Mm-hmm. Can you can you show us that? Yeah. Uh, so grace is received by faith, not by by works. Um, and often when we think of faith, we think of intellectual assent. So if I just believe really hard in these things, then that's faith. But I think really a scriptural, biblical definition of faith is that faith is trust in God. So uh, Abraham's given as an example of faith in in the scriptures that that he believed God. It was credited to him as righteousness. He believed these promises God had given to him. Mm-hmm. Now, Ro- Romans and, and Hebrews speaks a little better of Abram or Abraham than he, he actually uh, maybe deserves to be spoken of. <laughs> God's memory was very kind to him. Um, <laughs> but basically, God had given these promises that seemed impossible. And he had faith um, for them to come. And it wasn't just his intellectual assent. It's his trust. I'm going to follow God and trust in him um, that that he's going to bring these promises uh, to come to pass. So when we have faith in Jesus, it's, we're putting our trust in him. So where are we looking for our life? We're looking for our life, um, our worth in him. And then we receive everything he has to give us. And so often what we do is we try to find our life in other places. So I try to find my life in in political party I'm part of. I try to find my life in a hobby. I try to find my life in a in a, in a person, in a spouse, and, and try to get my life from there. And, and Jesus is like, no, I have all this grace for you. It requires you to trust me, though, and give up some of that trust in, in yourself or in others. And then you receive this grace, this uh, redemption, forgiveness of sins. But then there's like this sustaining aspect of grace. This grace is with us each day, um, helping us to be able to get through uh, mm-hmm. to the next moment and through the next trial. I like 
that we are human beings and our faith is faltery. Mm-hmm. I, I actually appreciate how honest the Bible is about people like Abraham. Mm-hmm. Abraham did trust God, but then he's like, I wonder how God's going to do this. Maybe I should help him. I mean, that's <laughs> the way. I, and so, I mean, that's what it seems to me as you're going through, you know, especially with the whole having a, a baby when God promised you're going to have a kid. And, but you know, there was a long time mm-hmm. waiting and, and you know, Abraham was, and Sarah were like, you know, maybe we'll just kind of, push it along a little bit. Uh, But yet God was still faithful Mm -hmm. and still God showered him with grace. Did he deserve to have a son after he just kind of tried to, you know, well, do it on my own? Well, no, but that, I think that's the whole point of grace, right? And Abraham never said, oh, God isn't going to do it. He's just like, maybe I'm supposed to do something. And he didn't wait on the Lord. Um, There's a lot of examples about that, but those, those accounts of Abraham should really comfort and encourage all of us Mm -hmm. because I've done that stuff, not like exactly like that, but things like that in my life. And I'm like, oh, maybe God wants me to, or maybe I got ahead of God. Um, And yet, yeah, I made a mess of things, but God was faithful Mm -hmm. and loving and he showered me and lavished me with grace. And then he still got his way, Mm -hmm. which I think is what we all want. We want the will of God in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Can, Can we abuse... God's grace. I I think we can, yeah. So uh, Paul Paul talks about this, and he says, "Hey, hey, just because there's grace, that does that mean I should go on just sinning? You know, if there, if I sin more, then more there'll be more grace, and more grace would be a good thing. So I should just go sin more because then there'd be more grace, and and that'd be great." And Paul's like, "No, that's not actually how it works." Yeah, let's slap you a um, little bit. <laughs> and and so it's not that because there's grace, that's a just as a pass to go go do whatever you want. Uh, if we've really received grace and that's impacted our lives and we've realized like how much that costs God and and how loving that is for him to give us that, then that should change us so that we don't want to go abuse grace, that we don't want to go abuse the forgiveness of God, that we don't want to uh, do that because because we love him because of what he's done for us. Yeah, and that's the answer to the qu- question that I get often when I share that salvation by grace mm-hmm. through faith yeah. with people. It's like, oh, you can go and do whatever you want then, you know. Well, no. Yeah. No, you have to pay an indulgence first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the side where we lose this fear, like a fear of God. You know, we often don't talk about it because I think we don't understand, you know, what that means. But there's an appropriate reverence and awe and fear of God and knowing one day, like, we're, we're going to have to give some account and there's going to be some judgment. And and the things that, you know, Jesus did not like are going to be burned up and there's going to be some some real cost to pay um and, and we so got a, we can't we got a new go. heart too that yeah. doesn't want to do those things yes yeah absolutely yeah we forget about that component mm-hmm. but if we are a believer in Christ if you placed your full trust in him you are now a child of god instead of a child of wrath and then you are a new creation in Christ see mm-hmm. that's the thing is you were a child of wrath now you're a child of god you, you can't be both mm-hmm. right so and now the, you're a new creation and the indwelling holy spirit that's right i mean hey we got some <laughs> something going on there yeah. tools yeah, and the Holy Spirit should be in your life letting you know, hey, Mike, that's not what we're supposed to be doing today. <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. Uh, we and use we Heather for examples of this. Oh, yeah, okay, I, yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. the fall Well, I used her for the good example but uh, earlier, so I had Oh, a, okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> grace is a, it, it says it's a gift. Mm-hmm. Grace is a gift. And if think about if, if somebody had gifted you a brand new car of your own liking, I don't know, pick one, um, brand new, gorgeous all the all the bells and whistles mm-hmm. you're not going to run around with this car and you know you're not you're going to get a i don't know do a demolition derby with it you're not going to do that right <laughs> yeah. you're probably going to wash it until the paint falls off you know mm-hmm. you're, you're going to and how much more so when you've got a gift of grace mm-hmm. you don't want to abuse it and throw it away and do you want to oh lord i love this mm-hmm. i love what you've given me Help me to learn how to use this grace. Help me through your grace to love others. Help mm-hmm. me to be a gracious person. That's our heart. So that's that's the that's the right response mm-hmm. to getting a gift that is so precious and so eternal, right? A car eventually is going to fall apart, but grace, if it's from God, wow, it's yeah. eternal. And that's a good point. Mm-hmm. You know, God loves us, and we become a conduit of that love to others. Likewise, with grace. Mm-hmm. We yeah. can we can <laughs> tunnel that or funnel that to others and and show that grace mm. each and every day. And that's what we're supposed to do. Yep, right, absolutely. And uh, and so often what w- we can do is we receive grace, but then we try to live by works and we expect everyone else to live by works. And right. so um, we have to stay in that posture of grace. So we're we're people that extend that grace. And, mm-hmm. uh, Jesus, one of the great parables, he tells the parable of the good Samaritan, the Samaritan that goes and helps the guy who's unlike him that would hate him and. 
and extends grace to him. So that's how we're supposed to be in, in our lives is are we extending that grace and that love to people unlike us, people that don't like us, our enemy? Uh, that's how we truly show that we have the grace of God in our lives so that we become the extenders of grace in this world. Because quite frankly, we are enemies of God, mm-hmm. right? And God just shed his yeah. grace on us, right? And so then we need to be responding in kind. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> Love your enemies, pray for them that persecute uh, you, yes. Okay. <laughs> your political enemies, even. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so going back to this this whole five solas thing, do you understand why it was so important, why it was so very important that we get this right? Because mm-hmm. anything outside of God's grace, you, you're doomed for eternity in hell. You mm-hmm. have to understand this stuff. And this is, I think, one of the reasons why Martin Luther and men like him were just absolutely grieved and said, no, I cannot be silent any longer. Uh, And my friend, if you're listening right now and you're saying the same thing, tell people, do it out of love, do it out of urgency, because we don't know. We don't know. We don't know the time or or when when Christ will return. Uh, But we do know this. He's given us a great gift. We need to share it with the world and maybe start with those you love. Actually, yeah. start with thanking the Lord, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's let's thank Him. So, so Mike, Mike says your pronunciation of what it, gracia, gracia. <laughs> sounds fine to him. Aw, yeah. oh good, yeah. <laughs> My Wisconsin <laughs> accent, gracia. <laughs> oh, that's great. Let's talk. Let's talk about Price Chapel. What yeah. is going on? Yeah. Um, so we're we're meeting on Sunday mornings, nine o'clock and eleven o'clock with two Sunday services. We're kind of in a in a process right now. Normally like fall we restart all our different ministries and we're we're restarting those, children's ministry and, and youth ministry and small groups and stuff, but they just look a little different this year and we're trying to figure that out and and stuff. But um, God's at work. We a couple weeks ago we had eight people get baptized. It was a wonderful Sunday Praise and the Lord. and and so uh, we're excited for this next season and if if you live in Carbon County looking for a church, pressechapel.org, we'd love to uh, have you with us. Fantastic. Oh, this has been such a good conversation. Thank you for coming all this way to yeah. bless us. This has been wonderful. And uh, my friend, we thank you also for joining us. And um, we hope that you extend grace to your neighbors, to your enemies, just as God has extended his grace to us. This has been Mike and Heather in the Morning, a production of Key Radio, located in beautiful Provo, Utah. For more information about the program and the ministries of Key Radio, check out our website, keyradio.org. On behalf of Mike, Heather, and the entire Key Radio staff, have a blessed and glorious day.